Hi guys, my name's Holly. Um, if you're new here, please excuse the mega casual situation going on. I have to sit here for the next probably hour or so to make this stuff I'm making, which I'll talk about in a second. And it's gonna take a while and I have videos that I wanna film. I kinda wanna film right now. This video is my <laughs> rereading check-in for the month of May, which means like we're going halfway into the year. That's wild. That's wild. I think I will give a sort of check-in of like where we are in the overall goal at the end of June. But as of May, May was a very productive uh, reading month for rereading. Started off with me still not at work, so I got lots of stuff then. And then finding out I was indeed going back to work. It also took a nosedive a little under halfway through the month. I'm wanting to make this thing called- I'm gonna mispronounce it. You may laugh at me. Galoob Jamun. And it's like an Indian dessert and it is so delicious and I tried it from a restaurant for the first time like delivered uh, last week and now I'm like set to make it myself but like the key ingredient <laughs> to this uh, delicacy is uh, something called koya or mala again butchering the language I apologize apparently in like India you can like pick it up at any grocery store the reason why everyone buys it at the grocery store there is because it's really tedious to make. If I could get down to Toronto, I could probably find it in a grocery store. There is a way to make it yourself. Basically all you do is you <laughs> boil milk until all that are left is the solids. And so I just have to keep stirring. It takes like an hour apparently. I am determined. So we're trying. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm, I'm nervous, but we're gonna do it. But I'm sitting here for an hour, and honestly, I was set up to like just watch YouTube for this hour, and I was watching it, and I was like, I really want to make videos. So this is going to be my monthly check-in. In case you don't know, I decided to reread uh, a bunch of my favorite series this year. Just childhood favorites, all books that I keep- that I like have in my own collection, and the last we heard I had finished off Harry Potter, and I was starting Narnia. So last month I did finish like um, the first Narnia book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I went in order of when they were published, with the exception of the prequel, which I read before The Last Battle. It's confusing. I read Narnia. Narnia, from what I understand, I couldn't remember for ages, like just looking back on it, when, like how old I was when I read them, but I was looking at the copies of the books I have, and <laughs> when I was little, my family wrote like our names or our last name in the books and this is my last name so I'm, I'm gonna cover it but February 06 so I'm guessing I read these books around February of 2006 I probably got them for Christmas or something although they're scholastic I definitely got them from a book order so if I recall we read the first book in class now 2006 I would have been in like grade 8 doesn't sound right but okay I don't know but I remember reading them in school I think I was a bit younger but maybe I wasn't and read The Lion and the Witch in the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, and I can't remember if we read the other books in class or if I just got into it and read them, but whatever the it is, I have all the books. I was very, very, very into them. I, you know, adored Aslan and all that. Sorry, my mind is a little bit mush. I am running on like four hours of sleep, and I was up all day, and I uh, was just at work. Bear with me, and it's, yeah, it's 12.30. <laughs> midnight. So I didn't go back to it until in my undergrad I took a fantasy lit course and we read Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, so that was a reread then. And I remember leading up to it, I hadn't I hadn't reread the book yet, but we were talking about it in class and one person's like, but I mean, then there's the Jesus thing. And I'm like, what Jesus thing? And so she's like, well, you know, it's like all Christian allegory. And I'm like, it is? I didn't know this. I, I hadn't looked back at Narnia in all that time. And as a little kid, I did not pick up on it. Going back, it's very heavy-handed. It's very hard to miss once you know it's there, once you're a little older and you can pick these things apart. Or maybe I was just a dumb kid, but I definitely did not know that loving Aslan meant loving Jesus. <laughs> I gotta admit, I went to a Catholic school and it, it did things. <laughs> For me, nothing against Christianity, I just, I have a hard time um, feeling preached at. Um, thank you, Catholic school. I did not enjoy this reread that much. I, I struggled. I read them really fast. I read them like a day each, but they were very difficult. Now, 
there's some debate as to what order you should read the books. There's the order that they were published and the order that they are set. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is the first book of this of the Narnia Chronicles that C.S. Lewis wrote, is actually the second chronologically within the story. The prequel was the last book that he wrote. So I read them in the order that they were published. Now most people will say C.S. Lewis said to read them in the chronological order, but I read this thing by the C.S. Lewis um, scholar expert fan and they were saying that you know C.S. Lewis answered a letter and said that he suggested that. It was probably just more he thought that that was the best way that kids might find it, but that there's actually a lot of world building that you miss out on if you, because it's not solid, <laughs> if you go in the order, like chronological order, you'll get a little more out of the series in regards to the world building if you read it in the order that they were published. And looking back, I'd say I'd sort of agree with that. I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I love these scholastic colors, by the way. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And then I would have read Prince Caspian. Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, and here's where I tore things up a bit. I read The Magician's Nephew, which is the prequel to all the books, and then I read the last book because I wanted, I wanted this to be the last one, and this is called The Last Battle. I definitely didn't enjoy this reread as much as I was hoping I would. It wasn't bad, and I'm glad to have reread the series because I'm very curious about C.S. Lewis himself and the Inklings and things like that, so I'm glad to have reread these books to get more perspective in that regard. It wasn't as fun as it was when I was a kid, and I think the Christian allegory thing definitely played a part in that. I also read, and I'll talk more about it, I think, in my uh, recent reads video, but I also read a biography of C.S. Lewis, um, I want to say by Alan Jacobs, called The Narnian or something like that, and I read that on, like, I listened to it on audiobook after reading these books, and it gave me some perspective on the man and how he wrote these books, and he didn't decide, like, wake up one morning and go, you know what, I'm going to write kids books that are Christian and make them love Jesus Lion. He wanted to write a children's story and he was also dealing with a lot of religious stuff himself and it sort of came together and so, I don't know, like I feel like I have more respect for that, <laughs> that it's just how his mind worked. And, and it was something that meant a lot to him and something that he spent a lot of his life studying and considering. I'm disappointed, like I... I really wanted to enjoy these books. Everything has been so happy since then. And I think that put me in a little bit of a slump into like in regards to this challenge. I think I'll enjoy the rest of the books. I'm fascinated by the Chronicles of Narnia in a scholarly way. Like I'm still interested in the way he writes children's books and how he used different things to create a children's story and to uh, keep um, child readers interest and things like that and as a fantasy enthusiast as one of the inklings I like it all for that and like he was an early fantasy writer and and for that I find it interesting in a more scholarly way as a general reader I think there's a lot of magic in such simple words and I appreciate that but overall I struggled to reread these books like I didn't want to I forced myself to I felt like I was doing readings for school I was interested enough to want to study it but it still felt like work like I'm actually looking at these books I'm like do I even want to keep them on my shelves and if I hadn't spent like the first half of the month <laughs> admiring how beautiful the covers are I honestly think I'd done haul them but again like there's a whole conversation about some of the characters in particular Susan so the land which in the wardrobe if you don't know it's a portal fantasy these kids go to a magic land and they return in later books but by the end of the last book Susan one of our main characters like you've got to know the story doesn't return because she's into lipstick, nylon, parties and boys and stuff, and so she doesn't need to go. And now, you gotta understand, in this book, not, um, not wanting to go back to Narnia means you don't want to go to heaven and hang out with Jesus, so it's, it's extra bad. And there's a lot of s scholars and fantasy writers and stuff that have a problem with that. From J.K. Rowling, take that from that what you will, uh, definitely a more white feminist. Uh, perspective there to Neil Gaiman who actually wrote a short story about it that I really want to read and it's called The Problem with Susan which has become sort of like the catchphrase for this whole conversation so like I'm interested in things like that not even halfway through the month I think around the 12th or so I was done the Narnia books and I started onto the next series which is the Inheritance series by Christopher Pellini 
uh, which starts off with Aragon. And so this is a dragon fantasy book. It was like my first big high fantasy, you know, immersive, you're in the world sort of thing as a kid. And I believe, yeah, I read these starting in 2007. Uh, the movie had come out, I really enjoyed it, so I wanted the book, and I remember being blown away by how much more was going on in the book than in the movie, and I just adored it. Like, and this is one of the series that, like, really... Harry Potter got me started reading, this kept me reading. And, like, I love this edition, the paperback, so much. They're so floppy and just good. Like, you can just lay that open and, and read, and yeah, the spine is actually in pretty decent shape. It's just such a gorgeous book, and, like... The texture and just, oh, I love the copy of this book. And that was around the time that I started back at work. That was definitely a huge distraction. And then I just didn't feel like reading as much. It took me to the very end of the month to finish the book. It w I enjoyed it. I definitely was feeling a lot more nostalgia. Uh, this is, you know, the feeling I was hoping to get <laughs> with these rereadings. I was a little nervous going into this one because I know that his books. There's four books in this in the Inheritance series. And so, in case you don't know what it's about, because I feel like no one on YouTube ever talks about this, Aragon is a high fantasy book about a uh, young boy named Aragon, uh, you know, sort of a peasant farmer boy who finds a dragon egg and sets out to be the first of uh, a long-lost history of dragon riders. And so it's them battling this, like, dystopian empire and it's- oh, I love these series. I remember reading this like academic nonfiction book called A Short History of Fantasy or something like that and I believe- I can't remember if they wrote it or if they edited it and other people wrote with it but it was Edward James and Farrah Mendelssohn and they're big like fantasy scholars and they wrote in that book- I'll, I'll put a link below. I'll try to remember. It was a really fascinating book but they wrote of Aragon that it was really really bad and I couldn't believe anyone liked it. And frankly, the end of that book kind of just turned into an opinion piece on their favorite and least favorite books. But they did highlight a lot of influential books in fantasy at the time, and Aragon, with the movie coming out and stuff like that, was really big and kidlit. I disagree. It's, yeah, it's no Lord of the Rings, and there is a bit of a ripoff to it. Like, I'd say generously that it's heavily inspired by Tolkien's works, but there's definitely some overlap. Like, it's not wholly unique, but I mean, instead of slaying dragons in Aragon, uh, they get to be main characters and are thoughtful and uh, elegant and fury and uh, um, we get to ride them. So that already appealed to me as a kid. I remember finishing this series and being in my first year of university. This really made me adore fantasy. This is why I love fantasy so much. And the books get better with each book. Like. Pellini was like 17 or 18 when he first published this book and he grew up with the series from there so like considering he was that young and he wrote this book and got it I think he self-published it originally or something like that or small press published it or something and then it got picked up it was traditionally published but even still he was very very young when this happened considering that so impressive even not considering that I still think it's a really fun series. And then that was the end of the month. So I'm into June. I'm still feeling a little slumpy. I don't know if I'm gonna get very far. May May was a uh, May was a success. That means I read seven books. Milk is finally reducing. Do you wanna see? In case you're curious, this is literally all I'm doing. I have a liter of whole milk just on some heat and I'm stirring, 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 scraping the sides and stuff and I'm just trying to reduce it until it's solids. And it is getting a little bit thicker and, uh, you know, it, it has come off a bit. You can sort of see where it was before. It's just gonna take a while. Thank you. Uh, I hope you didn't mind the very, very casual setting, um, but you distracted me while I was making this Koya, and um, that is lovely, so thank you. Yes, I think in June I'm going to do sort of a, a more update, look back at what I've done, and also look forward to see how much more we have to go to see if I'm actually going to be able to finish it, because I, I honestly, frankly, don't know if I will. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe, and bye. Like, that's a bloody-ass unicorn.